Hello and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2, and as requested by a potato, we are going to be testing what happens if we put the sun, well, yeah, the sun into a binary system. So we're going to add a second sun-sized object orbiting the sun, but while the sun also orbits it, and we're going to see if we completely destroy the solar system. Um. Okay, so that was a bad start. We have already completely destroyed the solar system. This may take a few tries to get right. <laughs> um, okay, where is solar? Si Why? Why isn't it the first one? There it is. Okay, so here we go. Take two. Take two. Delete sun first. And then binary. We can do this this slow things down and is that going to work they are orbiting each other but they are pulling each the problem with binary stars is they pull each other in a direction even if they don't mess with each other every single planet in the solar system is going to be thrown off as a result of it which is a slight problem so in order to pull this off correctly we're going to have to do binary stars with one star less massive than the Sun that way we won't pull the Sun too much and hopefully we won't make it fly away now the question is what star are we going to use for this Proxima Centauri may be our best bet so let's try orbiting Proxima Centauri around the Sun. We can see that it is having a bit of an impact on the Sun, but is it enough that it's going to ruin the solar system? Will things keep orbiting the Sun, or is the Sun going to slowly move away? It looks like it's moving at a speed at which Mercury is going to stay on, which means everything will likely stay on. Oh. Just a very, very unstable and large orbit now. Jeez, uh, this is not going to end well. Earth is already seeing receding, uh, temperatures dropping extremely quickly. Uh, the average global temperature is almost halved already. So yeah, we need to come up with an even better way to do this, which is probably going to be getting the second star closer to the sun. The faster it orbits, the less uh, room there is for the sun to wiggle, but the Roche limit exists and we don't want to rip apart Proxima Centauri on accident. Which just happened. Okay, so... Yes, do not rip stars apart, they tend to supernova. Uh, yeah, so that's another way to destroy the solar system. I'm confident that we can do this, we just have to find the right balance. If we get Proxima Centauri and put it out to there. Oh, okay, that exploded. We may have to go with something less massive. Let's see what we can do. It has to be really, really, what was Proxima Centauri? 129 Jupiters. That's about as low as we can go. I don't think we can really beat that, which is a problem. Yeah. Um... Looks like we're going to just have to make Proxima Centauri as small as possible. Without getting rid of its star status. So... Do do... We can go down under 100 Jupiters. That's not a bad start, but when is it going... There we go. So we can get it down to 80 Jupiters. Now at this uh, mass, it may still be affected by the rush limit a little bit too much for our liking which is at all okay but it appears to be working very very minor uh movement by the sun proxima centauri is staying stable so have we done it is this a feasible 
Oh, so the sun is moving. It is not even, but is it moving slow enough that the planets can adapt in time? Uh, and is it gaining speed? It looks like it's maxing out at the same speed every time. Um, according to the graph, this is correct. So, look at that. We have a constant speed for the sun. Well, not constant, it's on and off, but it has the constant maximum speed, which is good. Because that means that technically we could get things to follow it. The problem is that before that happens and after it happens, the orbits are going to be seriously thrown off. Earth is now heating up far, far more than it's supposed to, killing off a lot of vegetation, brightening the surface more than it's supposed to, and uh, the oceans are going to start receding soon. The ice caps are practically gone. <laughs> um, and this is in the course of days. <laughs> but let's see if there's any hope. Even though the temperature is just rising and rising and rising, and it looks like there's no hope, people are now basically cooking. How is the sun going to do? Now the earth is going to move a bit further away, and let's see what happens on the far pass. So the temperature is dropping, but it's coming back towards the sun again, so it's going to just hit the old temperature again. I'm not sure there is a ton we can do about this. Um, one option would be to make the sun smaller, but that's not a good option because that's going to throw everything off. Um, okay, let's try it. If we do half of the sun and then have another half of the sun. Uh, I'm not seeing this go well, I'm going to be honest. I do not, technically this should add up to a pretty even amount of heat, and they should be able to orbit each other uh, binary pretty well because they're the same mass. They're going to, yeah, they're going to do that. They're going to do their little dance, and they're going to throw each other across the solar system very quickly very very quickly they're uh gaining ridiculous amounts of speed up to a thousandth of light oh earth is going to be set in between them oh boy oh no earth this is just really unfortunate earth doesn't even have time to warm up from this because it's going so fast Oh man, is Earth going to be sucked in, or is it going to survive? Oh geez, Earth is about to be flung. Not even a little bit either, Earth is being flung way out towards Mars. Will Earth collide with- that would be amazing if it did. That would just make this the best coincidence ever, but Earth is not going to get close enough to Mars for that. Would have been good, but it's not happening. No other planets to get collide with? No. Okay. Fine. Um, is Earth still going to orbit? Is it going to be pulled by their gravity at all? Uh, no. Not at all. Yeah, the sun's just kind of leaving now. The sun is actually gaining speed this time around. It is... At the high point, it's getting much... Oh! It actually gets to the point where they've separated. Oh, and now its speed is going down because they're pulling on each other. This is interesting. What's going to happen? Speeding things up way too far. They're going to come back towards each other again because they both have high mass. They're pulling each other, but it's at an extremely low, uh, low rate. Um, yeah, we're never going to see when it happens. It's 
going to be in way too much time for us to actually care about. Okay, uh, so we're going to give this one last ditch attempt at uh, victory. And let's see if we get two. Oh, wait. Oh, I have an idea. This is ridiculous. This is going to murder everyone. But if we get a big... Oh, no, that's going to Nova. Okay, so let's not use the sun for this. Let's replace the sun with a very massive star. I'm talking... There we go. Ten suns. Now, this is going to probably destroy the orbits of everything if we don't reorbit them. So we're going to put the sun where it's... Uh, well, that star where the sun's supposed to be. And we're going to auto-orbit everything. Now, this is going to really mess with the orbits. I'm not going to lie. This is probably going to be a absolute mess. So we're not going to worry about the asteroids. We're just going to worry about the planets. Yep, you're... Oh, wow. Jupiter would have been fine. Uh, auto-orbit. Auto-orbit. It looks like it doesn't matter. Everything's going to be thrown off anyways. But, okay, so now that that's done, everything is on fire. Um, but that's not what's important. <laughs> what's important is we make a binary star system in the solar system. So, we have uh, the solar system, which is functioning. Not how it's supposed to at all, but it is functioning. Uh, no planets are running away. And now we're going to put the smallest star we can far, far away. This will give it less gravitational pull. And will this slow it down to the point where the planets can comprehend what's going on and deal with it? Because I think it might. I think that Earth is going to actually stay around Spica. I don't think it's going to get thrown away. And look at that. It's working. Sure, the entire solar system is now a mess. Everyone's dead. Everything's on fire. Even Jupiter's glowing. But, technically we have succeeded. It's still the solar system. All of the planets are still there. And there are two suns. Did you see that? Proxima Centauri got close enough to Mercury that it actually ripped Mercury apart. Wow. That must have gotten really hot. Yeah, 4,000 degrees hot. Um, sorry Mercury, that was pretty bad. Yeah, so this is not the solar system you'd want to live in, but it works. Oh, here it goes near Mercury again. Poor Mercury is just being beat up by Proxima Centauri. This is bullying at this point. Let's see what happens. Mercury, check the temperature. Come on. And as it gets it to its closest... Oh, nothing happened this time. How disappointing. I'm sure they get closer together at some point, but it's probably going to take a while to get that close again. Yeah, so... The uh, moral of the story is it's not a plausible thing to do. It's it's not worth the amount of work. Oh, see, the temperature was going up for a bit there. 4,300. Um, it just plain isn't a possibility. It, it could happen, but the amount of balancing I'd have to do in the game, it's not possible with the tools I have. I mean, we... Uh, let's see if we go new and then we get two stars, but how do you get the two stars to orbit without Completely murdering each other there is one simulation where they did that by making the it was Genius how they did it both stars moved just far enough for each other to escape each other, but it still involves them moving like this. Now you could technically pull this off 
if you were to build the solar system like this like if i were to put mercury here mercury is now going to have a weird orbit but it'll technically work maybe not is it gonna lose it oh you've lost mercury what a terrible parent you are son Okay, so it looks like it's just going to get thrown because of the change in gravity. So is it possible? Maybe. Like, if we put the Earth adequately far away, I think that this is going to work just because the center of gravity is close enough to what we want. So I think we're going to get some orbiting. But the problem is... The two suns are moving incredibly fast. Too fast for Earth to deal with. The only things we could get to uh, orbit at a pretty nice pace would be another star. Which, let's face it, three stars orbiting each other is just asking for something to go wrong. Like is about to happen right here as their velocities are getting diverged. And that's going to cause them to collide soon. <laughs> Set another one. Throw it off even more. Oh, you see, this is a balancing act. Once one of them gets sufficiently slower than the other. Oh! Oh, jeez. Okay. This is getting pretty serious. Ha, huh, get it? Because the name of the star. Okay. So, I think the moral of the story is... Uh, don't mess with what works. The solar system is pretty intricately balanced already. Adding another star to the mix makes things horribly complicated. And if you manage to get it to work on your own in this game, uh, you know, send a link to the video. I'd love to watch it, and then I can steal it and do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will see you all next time. Bye!